last class we talked about polar versus nonpolar covalent bonds. So this is just a quick slide to show you the notation of polar covalent bonds. So sometimes we use this Greek letter, which means partial, to notate where the partially negative versus the partially positive atoms are. So my negative atom is always my more electronegative atom. That oxygen is pulling the electrons from hydrogens because there is an unequal sharing. That oxygen really, really wants those electrons and hydrogen's more willing to give them away. So that's why my hydrogen is gonna be partially positive, my oxygen's gonna be partially negative. Now, other times, instead of using this lovely Greek symbol, we just use bond arrows. So the arrow points towards the more electronegative atom. It shows that the electrons are being pulled up towards my oxygen here, or the electrons are being pulled towards my chlorine in this example here. So we almost have like a little positive where the positive atom is, and then the electrons are being pulled this way. Now, bonding or bond strength is related to polarity. Typically, the more polar a bond is, the stronger the bond is. And properties of a substance depend on the bond type. So we've already looked at the properties of ionic versus covalent bonding, and we know they have very different properties. And that is because they have different bond strengths. So now we're going to look at some definitions of physical properties of different covalent substances. And a lot of what we're going to talk about right now is water. So we have a riddle for you. Okay, not really a riddle. We're bad at riddles, but more like clues about our favorite molecule. It's polar, it's shaped like an outstretched V, its properties are awesome, and it makes up three-fourths of the surface of the Earth. <laughs> that one always gives it away. Our favorite molecule is water, and we're not going to lecture you about how important water is and the fact that all life as we know it could not survive without it, because, yeah, that's true. But we really want to talk about what makes water so unique for biology itself. What are some awesome properties of water? Now we mentioned the shape of water and the fact that water is polar. It has one very electronegative oxygen that is always trying to keep the electrons closer to it than to the hydrogens it's bonded to. And this actually gives oxygen a slightly negative charge because of the electrons that are spending more time next to it. And it gives the hydrogens a slightly positive charge. Well, that means that other water molecules have an easy time bonding together. Why? Well, because the hydrogen of one water molecule with its slightly positive charge can bond to another water molecule's oxygen with that slightly negative charge. These bonds among the water molecules are hydrogen bonds, and these are the very bonds that allow water to have many of the properties that we're about to talk about. Have you ever looked at a really tall tree and wondered, how does the water get all the way up there? I mean, it's gotta go against gravity. Gravity? Well, in our plant video, we talk about the xylem. It's vessels within certain types of plants, like trees, and these vessels transport water. But what's really neat about water is that it sticks to the xylem walls in what is known as adhesion. And this helps fight gravity. But water molecules with their hydrogen bonding, they also bond to each other in something called cohesion. It's almost a beads on the string kind of fashion. Water molecules evaporate from a leaf and then the next water molecule in line is pulled up, upwards and so on. This cohesion is really a big deal. Cohesion is also a reason that water striders, one of our favorite insect types, can skate on water. Cohesion contributes to the surface tension of water. Water actually has quite a bit of surface tension compared to many other liquids. And it's not just water striders that can walk on water. There are a lot of insects, spiders, and even larger animals like reptiles and some birds that have the ability to walk on water. So to the Google for that. Now with water being polar, it's also a very powerful solvent for other molecules. And that means that water can dissolve many other molecules 
especially polar molecules and ionic compounds. Now, why does that matter? Well, this is really important because many of the processes that occur in organisms use water as a solvent. In our body system video, we talk about the function of kidneys, and you definitely couldn't have kidneys doing their function without water. Also, a main component for body fluids is water. I'll never forget when I was little, my father built us a pond. We had some goldfish in there, and I loved this pond. Well, in West Texas, where we're from, it can freeze in the winter. And one morning, I went outside, terrified to find that the top of the pond had frozen. And I thought our fish were goners. Only to find out that they were swimming and doing their fish activities under the ice layer. It's common for many substances to actually contract when they freeze and to become more dense. But water expands when it freezes and becomes less dense in its frozen state, resulting in floating ice, where it can actually make this insulated surface layer that makes a difference for many organisms underneath. And this is due to the hydrogen bonds. See, at freezing level, the making and breaking of hydrogen bonds, which usually happens pretty often, it's not happening very much when frozen. And so the molecules, they're set into this lattice of hydrogen bonded molecules, just far enough apart that it's less dense in ice form than it is in water form. And that's going to be very important for all of that aquatic life. Speaking of temperature, water resists changing its temperature. So you saw these definitions in the video, maybe you wrote them down, maybe you did not. So here is just a simpler definition in my words. So we have adhesion is the sticking together of particles of different substances. Tape is an adhesive, a band-aid is an adhesive. That tape is sticking to your paper or the band-aid is sticking to their skin. Or the water droplets are sticking to the inside of our tree. Now cohesion is the sticky sticking together of particles of the same substance. So water particles stick together, which is how they pull their way up the tree. Density, as we already know, is mass per unit volume. That's our grams per milliliter, or our grams per liter, or grams per centimeter cubed. Now, when we're looking at solubility, solubility is just something's ability to dissolve. And when we're looking at the fun chemistry term, we say compounds or molecules disassociate in water. That was when I drew out that nice ion soup. The sodium molecules go, or sodium ions go in one part, the chlorine ions go in another, and they're all just in the water together, but the bonds have broken. So our compound has separated into simpler molecules, atoms, or ions. Now, capillary action is the ability of a liquid to flow in narrow spaces in the opposite direction of forces like gravity. So if you put a piece of paper towel standing straight up on a big pile of water, it is going to travel up the paper towel against the force of gravity. That is because of capillary action. And then we have stuff like surface tension. When an object is denser than water and is still able to float on top of water. So bugs can do that or sometimes you can get a paper clip to float on top of water. That is because of surface tension. Now my last definition we're going to look at right now is phase transitions. So that is just the transformation from one phase to another through heat transfer or pressure. So every substance has these different points where when we raise them to a certain temperature, you can see right here the temperature is increasing on this graph. So I might start in the solid phase and then as I increase my temperature, eventually I'm going to move into my liquid phase. And if I keep increasing my temperature, I'm going to move to the gas phase. Okay. Then as we change the pressure, you can see that these points change. So if I am a very, very low pressure, I'm going to go from a solid to a liquid. 
or a solid to a gas, depending on where I fall on my graph.